can you tell me a little bit about yourself and introduce yourself? Sure thing, Jack. My name is Matt Cooper. I'm an emergency room physician working in Georgetown uh, and a couple of other medical interests. Um, I've been practicing for over 15 years, graduated from McMaster in 1998. All right, Matt, so could you just uh, tell me a, bit, a little bit about Huntington's disease? Certainly. So Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant condition whereby 50% uh, of the time you will acquire it from an affected parent. Um, it uh, affects about 5 in 100,000 people in the United States and Canada. Um, and uh, it, it has a neurologic impact on your body and your ability to function. Okay, so could you just tell me some of the signs and symptoms of Huntington's, please? Certainly. So um, it really has something that really affects three major parts of, of human uh, interaction function. The most um, visible uh, feature of Huntington's is the physical uh, complications um, that happen. So something called chorea, which is basically a, a, a movement, a disconnected movement of the body that is always happening. Um, and. Um, there's tremors that are associated with that, um, slow movement of parts of your limbs, and that, that eventually can progress to um, significant in, uh, in difficulty in, in movement. So uh, the, those are the physical manifestations. Then some of, some of the cognitive and behavioral, behavioral um, problems. So from a cognitive perspective, you have a rapid deterioration of brain function, things like uh, memory loss, um, and um, even personality changes. The third uh, feature of Huntington's is uh, effect on mental health, so problems with depression as a result of the, the um, inevitability of the disease uh, and the one-way um, uh, projection of the, the symptoms. So. And around uh, what age do these symptoms onset? Uh, median onset is in the 30s, and the symptoms typically last anywhere from 10 to 20 years. So uh, awesome. what type of help can somebody with Huntington's disease get? Um, there's a lot of uh, support in the community um, for individuals that have Huntington's disease. As you know, there's no uh, cure for the, the disease, um, so it's, it's symptomatic control. So when we look at um, the, the movement uh, disorder part of the disease, there are some medications which can, can help with that. However, they, they cannot fix uh, the movement disorders. Um, there's uh, allied health care, so things like physiotherapy, occupational therapy, which can be of benefit. Um, there is uh, psychiatrists and uh, social workers that can be helpful um, in treating some of the, the mental health um, uh, effects of the, the disorder. Um, and then there's um, genetic counselors, which can, can help in um, going over a lot of the issues with respect to the, the genetics of the disorder. And uh, what type of medications would people with Huntington's disease be taking? Uh, there's a category of medication called benzodiazepines, which can relax the muscles. There's a lot of the dopamine agonists, so levodopa, that, that some of the Parkinson's patients uh, will take. And then there's um, a group of medication called uh, SSRIs, um, which are antidepressant medications, which can be helpful in treating some of the mood disorders associated with the condition. And so as we all know, uh, Huntington's disease is a genetic disease, so Matt, how would you go about um, advising a, a patient on a genetic testing? I think that's a very um, individual decision uh, for the patients and their associated family members. It's something that once you know uh, the result of the genetic test, do I, don't I, does my child or does my child not have Huntington's? I think you have to ultimately live with that, that knowledge and that decision. So it's something that has to be approached with a lot of forethought um, and um, knowing that when you know the answer, your life will be changed in one direction or the other. So um, I, think, I think it's very case dependent, it's very family dependent, so there needs to be a lot of thought uh, into do we do this testing just because we can. Um, so. I think there are um, professionals, uh, genetic counselors, who deal with that question on a regular basis, and um, I think they would be probably the most appropriate people to give guidance and counsel for that very challenging uh, question. Um, so I suppose I suppose there's, there is no right answer. It's it's the right answer for you and your